Have you had any negative reactions from the families of people who died that day that you are prepared to sit down and break bread with people who would still like to kill people who are not of their faith? Not from the families. I've had some amazing contact with the families um, because I think they're all, everyone can see what it is I've been trying to do. Um, and there was one wife who lost her husband and her husband was um, between myself and the bomber. And she was the most incredible person because her grace in saying to me, if this is the last thing that my husband's done, which is to shield you, then what a wonderful thing he's done. And I met his two little children. Um, we did a walk from Leeds down to London and they came on this walk and the two kids were there and, and it was about Muslims and non-Muslims and black and white and gay and straight and anyone who felt that they were opposing each other in views joined each other and walked and there were his two children and I met his mother and it was extraordinary um, and it's looking at the emptiness of that family and that's a such a clear reminder of it's not okay whatever justification terrorism has behind it it's not okay to f to to have an eye for an eye um, because it's never ever going to solve anything and to take a father away from his family isn't going to solve the problems in the Middle East but you haven't had any sort of reactions where people perhaps have misunderstood what you're trying to do that they're offended that you would sit down with these people yeah they've mainly come from the states and from um, particular Jewish communities um, who have felt that I'm betraying uh, the fight and that how dare I be so forgiving so once again it's been quite misconstrued of of my nature of how can I open my arms and sit with someone who is so vile and wanting death and destruction. Um, I personally don't see another way. I don't see another way other than how important it is to have the conversation. We have got to keep talking to each other um, because it's only then that we can understand perhaps where there's a common ground. So seven years on, do you think the world has changed? Yes and no. I think, I think innocence and naivety has changed. I think people are more aware, but that also brings its own problems because I think with an awareness comes also a bit of a jumpy um, reaction to certain things that you, you just try and backtrack and use hindsight to say, now if there was an innocence and a naivety, would that, have, would that reaction have been different? Um, I think um, for particularly um, the Islamic um, part of our societies being feeling so divided after these acts must be incredibly difficult for them to to feel accepted um, wholeheartedly and embraced within our whole community. Do you feel that it's a more secure place? Is it a safer place now, seven years on? No, I don't, I don't think anything's, you know, I, what I've really learned the hard way is how fragile actually our lives are and whether that's an attack from outside or whether that's just something that can happen as a tragic event in your own life um, it's it's fragile it's all very fragile and I think it's um, we're fooling ourselves if we think that the world is a cozy place to, to be